Hello again, uh, it's Paul Norell here with a brief look at Victory or Death, a game on the Peloponnesian Wars, published by PSC Games, designed by Ian Brody. Let me begin outright by saying I'm a devoted student of the Peloponnesian Wars and a fan of all Peloponnesian War games, I've acquired a number over the years. Um, each of which deals with the theme in uh, a very particular and unique way. We go back to 1991 with the publication by Victory Games of Mark Herman's Peloponnesian War. I played that non-stop for almost a year when I first got it. And uh, right up to 2017 when that same uh, creator designed his latest offering, Pericles. Uh, published by GMT Games. Uh, in between, there's been Martin Wallace's Pericles, Fran Diaz's Polis, Fight for the Hegemony, uh, Athens and Sparta, a block war game published by Columbia Games, Hellenes, uh, another block war game published by GMT. Uh, the only game I've never played is uh, Epic of the Peloponnesian War, published by Clash of Arms. But I finally added Victory or Death to my collection only a few weeks ago. Although it's been around for a while, I refrain from getting it because, well, I formed the impression, totally mistaken as it turned out, that it was an oversimplified game for beginners new to wargaming in general, and the theme in particular. How wrong could I be? I watched Marco Nardo's uh, video review a short while ago and was immediately converted. Well, they say great things are worth the wait, and one of the things that is great about Victory or Death is that you can play the entire 27 years of the Peloponnesian War in an hour and a half. It's a team game for up to four players, with two factions per side. Now the only caveat I'll mention here is that unlike other games in the Quartermaster General series, which deal with um, World Wars 1 and 2, the card narrative of Victory or Death, couched as it is in quotations from the chronicler of the Peloponnesian War, uh, Thucydides, might deter some gamers who have little knowledge of the period and even less interest. But then what does not deter feeds curiosity. That said, I'd like to do a brief run through of the game to demonstrate the system, the fast play and the historical flavor that the game manages to recreate. I'd uh, like to use uh, during this playthrough a PowerPoint map uh, produced by a contributor to Board Game Geek who goes by the username of Zern, that's Z U R N. So, thank you very much to him uh, for providing that map. Victory or Death is an asymmetrical game. Four powers divided into two factions, oligarchs and democrats, have different size card decks, different card texts. And finally, different composition of forces. So let's look at each in a bit more detail. Now with the largest navy, Athens must establish control of vital sea areas and use land and sea battle cards to wear down the opposition and protect Attica from assault by land. The player must also be very sparing in the play of their cards because Athens is vulnerable to forced removal of cards from the draw deck, a situation which can leave it bereft of cards in the final turns. And in a recent game I played, uh, the Demos squandered a nine-point lead with two turns remaining because Athens lost all of its remaining cards and went down to humiliating defeat. Well, the Delian League, uh, Athens' ally, represents the allied states of Corsaira and the uh, Ionian Islands. The player has the opportunity to plant cities in the islands and gain victory points. 
In addition, um, many of the cards are status cards which provide additional victory points during scoring rounds for controlling key locations. So it's important that the player of the deal in Lee gets these onto the table as soon as possible because scoring rounds are accumulative. Now Sparta is the foremost land power and they'll want to expand control through placement of their superior hoplite force to threaten Attica and Athens. And the player also has the opportunity to establish a presence on the coast of Ionia and adjacent seas. Corinth uh, is represented uh, or represents not only Corinth itself but also the powerful uh, allies in Boeotia, dominated principally by Thebes. Now the player can plant cities in Sicily and Boeotia, while its navy can challenge both Athens, Athens and its allies. Many Corinthian cards require other players, particularly Athens, to discard cards from their draw deck. And this is a powerful weapon particularly as the game draws to a close. Each power has a variable number of bribery tokens which assist in the establishment of cities and the mustering of forces. These represent the support uh, bought from neutral states and is vital in the establishment and maintenance of supply lines which is a very important part of the game. Now the initial setup is shown here on the map thanks again to Zern. Each player deals 10 cards from their draw deck and discards 3 leaving a hand of 7. Each player starts by playing any previously play prepared cards they choose. Then they must play a card from their hand and then they have the option to place another prepare card on the table for use in a future round. But this is done at the cost of discarding another card from their hand. The player then checks for supply and refills their hand to seven cards. Corinth always plays first, then the Delian League, followed by Sparta, and finally Athens. After every three turns there's a scoring round with scores accumulating as the, uh, the game uh, progresses. Excuse me. Any team gaining a lead of uh, 10 victory points or more during a scoring round wins an automatic victory. Now if we take a close look at the Corinthian hand we see there are a number of different ty types of card. Event cards are played during the play step and have a one-off immediate impact and are then discarded. Status cards are also played during the play step but these remain on the table and their effects are continual. For example, uh, providing bonus victory points in the scoring rounds. Prepare cards can be played either during the play step and or during the planning step. If the latter, they require the discarding of a card from the hand. Prepare cards come into effect either when triggered by another player action or when marked with the Sigma icon during the owning player's next strategy step. Muster and battle cards are played during the play step to remove enemy pieces and place reinforcements respectively. If we look again at the map, we see that uh, the Corinthian trireme is adjacent to the Corsiran trireme and Corinth, wishing to eliminate the threat to the Gulf of Corinth, decides to play the sea battle card to remove the opposing fleet. It then plays a prepare card face down on the table 
for which it discards its status card. Redrawing its hand to seven cards, the Corinthian turn is concluded. The Delian League plays next. Now, they have a Muster Trireme card, and they could use it to replace the one just lost. But the problem here is that if Corinth has another Sea Battle card, it could just be lost again. And the Delian League player also has several Prepare cards, which, as I mentioned earlier, will allow it to play cities in the Ionian Island. And as cities are the key to gaining victory points, it makes sense to get some of these down as soon as possible. So the Dealing League will play a Prepare card during the play step at no cost, and another Prepare card during the planning step at the cost of discarding an additional card from the hand, in this instance, a Sea Battle card. The hand is replenished to seven cards, and the turn concluded. Sparta plays next, and unfortunately there's not a lot Sparta can do initially, as they have no Muster Hotlight card. So they will uh, play a Prepare card in the play step, and another during the planning step, discarding the event card. Sparta draws three more cards, and its turn is concluded. Finally, Athens. Now, Athens has decided to retain a land battle card. And it's important to remember that land battle cards do not simply apply to adjacent land units, but are also available for use by a trireme adjacent to an opposing land unit. This represents the amphibious operations which the Athenians used to great effect during the war, ravaging the Peloponnesian coastline, uh, transporting troops overseas to quell rebellions, um, etc. So Athens uses a muster hoplite card to place a hoplite in Attica, bearing in mind that uh, you have to have a supply to uh, your own city uh, in which to do that. Now, mindful of the need to conserve its hand against forced removal, Athens decides not to play a prepare card, takes one card to replenish its hand, and ends the turn and the first round. Well, now that um, I've demonstrated the card play, I'll continue simply by showing the moves made by each faction over the next few rounds. So, at the beginning of round two, Corinth plays an event which allows it to place a bribery token, then a city, in Chios. The bribery token requires the discarding of a card. The city is placed, and the token removed immediately for use again if required, even in the same turn. And the reason for this move is that Corinth anticipates that the Delian League will try to place cities in the Ionian Sea, and wants to disrupt this if possible. The uh, move re uh, reflects the historical uh, situation where various Athenian allies in the area revolted in the hope that Sparta would provide aid. Unfortunately, Sparta, without the sea power to challenge Athens, was often unable to fill its promise and many of these revolts were later suppressed. Lesbos and Milos being notable examples. Now the Delian League has two prepare cards on the table which could be used during the strategy step. Only one is eligible however as Corinth has preempted uh, the Delian League intentions by placing a city at Chios. So the Delian League player is uh, able to place a bribery token and city at Lesbos. Then they muster a trireme in the Icarian Sea during their play phase. This is done to threaten Chios. And finally, during the planning phase, another prepare card is placed face down on the table. Sparta has two prepare cards on the table, both of which it can play during the strategy step. The first allows it to muster a hoplite, which is placed in Argos. The second requires the discarding of two cards from the hand to place a city with a hoplite, and the city is placed in Argos. 
Athens now plays a land battle card, which, as I mentioned earlier, can be used against uh, by uh, sea units against land units. And Athens plays this to remove the Spartan hoplite already placed in Argos. Now Sparta has a status card on the table, which allows it to discard a land battle card in the hand, which will prevent the removal of the hoplite. Unfortunately, Sparta has no land battle card in its hand at present, and the hoplite in Argos is removed. Round two ends. Round three is the first scoring round. Corinth plays two prepare cards during its turn, discarding an additional card in the process. The Delian League plays a prepared card from the previous turn to place a city in Lesbos, and a status card which will provide bonus victory points. Sparta musters the hoplite to replace the one lost in Argos, and Athens plays a status card to provide bonus victory points. Scoring is as follows. The Demos gain uh, four victory points for each city on the map. They also gain two bonus victory points for having a supply piece in Attica. Now a Delian League status card also provides for another two victory points if the Demos have a city adjacent to the Icarian Sea and the oligarchs do not. However, the oligarch city at Chios negates this bonus. Total for the Demos, six victory points. The oligarchs gain four victory points for each city. Their total, four victory points. Well, I shall leave off the replay here. I, I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you a taste for this game. And if you haven't already, I do hope you will give it a try and not delay as long as I did. Uh, it'll be really worth the investment. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.